Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at face detection using the HAR cascade classifier. So uh, for this video, we are going to need the um, OpenCV and uh, NumPy, and so specifically OpenCV. The first two things we need is to get the data, the train the data for face and the eye. And these are typically in OpenCV installation folders. Now, if you look at the OpenCV documentations, they want you to pass the two commands, CV2 casket classifier, CV2 casket classifier, and then inside them, you provide these two XML files. One is har cascade front all face default, and the other one is har cascade i. Now, as some of you may probably experience or will experience it, if you just pass these two terms here, sometimes your uh, OpenCV compiler cannot find the address of the XML files. So one of the solutions that I found on the web, and that is very useful without you needing to add the address of those uh, folders, including these XML files to your path or anything, one thing that you can do, and it, it solves the problem immediately, is to add this uh, single term here and then add a plus. So you say cv2.data.har cascades and then plus and this will exactly uh, allow the compiler to access those xml files without you modifying anything here okay so if you pass these two instead then you don't need to worry where are these xml files and you provide the full address or anything so just add this extra term here and that will take care of bringing the training data for the face and the eye and the important thing about the face is this is for frontal face. So if the person is looking uh, on the side and showing you only a portion of the face, right, like a silhouette or something, this is not going to work as we'll see. So it's just for full face, frontal face. So here I read my image, I convert it to grayscale, and that's the other thing. If you want your image to be detected, you need to pass to the casket classifier the grayscale image, not color image. So I pass my grayscale image to the face underscore cascade dot detect multi-scale. The other thing you need to pay attention to is this detection is done in multi-scales, okay? So it is not sensitive to what size of picture you are trying to detect a face inside okay so it uses pyramids as i said pyramids the image pyramid has lots and lots of applications i mentioned it for you for um optical flow i mentioned it in the past for the sift feature points and you see it here also for cascade so in order to make your algorithm robust to the scale many algorithms use a pyramid and apply their algorithm to a pyramid of images and there are several factors here. The first two most important ones other than the image, one of them is called the scale factor, which is the scale factor of the pyramid, how much each image is gonna be scaled up or down along the axis of the pyramid. And the last one is called the min neighbors, which is the number of neighbors each candidate rectangle for either the face or the eye should have to keep it and if we want to know what is the effect of bumping this number up or down, if you make this number bigger, it is going to uh, require more and more neighbors for a rectangle to be a candidate and counts as a face or an eye. So it leads to less detections, a smaller number of detections, but of course, better qualities. So if you want to detect more faces, you want to bring this number down. If you want to detect less faces, but you are more sure about them, you're going to increase this number, okay? And typically, many algorithms go with five. Many, not algorithms, I mean many, uh, probably, uh, embedding of this code in the, on the web, if you see, they mostly use this five. So when you run this uh, classifier, detect multi-scale classifier for faces, 
it is going to return some results for you called faces here. And in this faces, one of the things that you have are four coordinates for a rectangle, X and Y for the top left corner and then width and height for the size of the window. So you use those and then you draw a rectangle here using CB2 rectangle on your image. And here I chose the blue color with line thickness of two. So wherever I have a face, I'm going to uh, mark it with a blue rectangle. Okay. And then the other thing I do, I extract from inside that window, both in the gray and the image, I extract a region of interest, ROI. Okay. So I'll pass that ROI now to my next classifier, which is I underscore cascade detect multi-scale. And when I pass that gray version, then what does it do? That is going to detect the eyes. And then again, this eyes has four numbers, X and Y for the corners and W and H for the size. And then using that, you're going to add another rectangle around each eye. And this time I can use a green color or red color or anything. Okay. So again, it's not going to give you the eyes and the face in one step. You first detect the faces using the face cascade, and then you pass a region of interest using the coordinates of the face. You extract a region of interest of gray image, pass it to the eye cascade, so that gives you the coordinates for the eye, and then you can add some kind of a shape annotation, something around the eye as well. And then you can show the image here, right? So, uh, you can see here that I added that um, green rectangle around the region of interest in color, not around the region of interest in gray. Region of interest in gray was used for detection and classification. But when I want to put my rectangle, I put it around the color image as I did here, because at the end of the day, I want to show you the, a color image with all of those rectangles. So let's go ahead and run the algorithm. So the first thing I do, I have an image of two faces that you recognize probably, <laughs> and we'll see how this algorithm works on it. Two faces in one image. There we go. <laughs> right? Javi Mandel and uh, one of the AGT uh, uh, participants who is now quite a bit famous for himself acting in Las Vegas. And as you can see, it only could detect Javi Mandel, not this gentleman here. And the reason is two things. First of all, Javi Mandel is full face. This guy is kind of full face. He has tilted, but that's not the main reason his face is not detected. The main face is the tape. So this tape kind of confused your uh, classifier because here the eyes are there. The nose is there. So those filters of the hard cascade, those edge filters, the corner filters, and all of those, they can detect everything, but they don't detect the mouth, right? So uh, like a um, horizontal edge detector or something is not going to detect the mouth. And you see here, his mouth is open, but still can be detected. But here, the, there is no mouth, so he's not going to be detected. So this training data are trained on normal frontal images. They are not trained on abnormalities like this. So if you see something like that, there is a good chance that it's not detected, right? The other thing I wanted to show you is um, a, a group of images from Will Smith. And I have two versions of that, a small image and a large image. And although the quality is not the best, but I want to also show you the effect of the size and also, again, the orientation of the neck or the head. So let's look at the small one. So this is his uh, uh, small image. So there are nine images. And you can see only in three of them that are frontal face. The face is detected. This one, well, let's talk about it in the uh, large, larger image. But you see the other ones are all the head is tilted. They are not perfectly frontal face. This is kind of frontal face too or maybe call it three-quarter face, but this one is almost frontal face perfect. But you see, these three are detected. This one, this one, 
the face is not complete. This one, the face is not complete. And these two specifically, a portion of the face is cast. Uh, there is a shadow cast on it. So that shadow is going to really ruin the uh, classification. And you see in this uh, picture here, only one eye is detected. And that's another thing here. Uh, your image is small and the scaling that you use for the, um, uh, the uh, pyramid, you, you might need to tweak that around and change it and the number of um, neighbors so you get more detections. The last one is the same image as the top one, but three times bigger. And we want to see the effect of a larger size image without changing anything, right? Would that change any of my detections? And the answer is yes. Here you can see that I have four faces detected and this face is detected, although a portion of it is cast by shadow. And it is detecting the two eyes in all of these three images. In this one, this eye is blurred by the shadow, so it's not detected. And uh, again, it's never perfect. I mean, in this case, I have some reason why uh, I have uh, one eye because one eye is cast, uh, there is a shadow on it. But in this case, this is interesting. It is detecting three eyes. And the only reason that you might think of why there are three eyes is this kind of small, uh, I would say, it's not like a hole, but it's a small, I don't know, whatever you call it. Maybe it's just because of the makeup or something on his face that is detected by a point um, probably filter and this is also counted like an extra eye which is very interesting right but you clearly see that these two cases uh the one eye is not almost there the part the face is not symmetric so it's not going to be detected this one there is some shadow so it's not going to be detected and the same with this, this eye and this eye are quite a bit different. There is not so much of symmetry. This is very interesting here that this one has no detection so far. And uh, the main thing that can come to my mind is the difference in the light intensity of the left side and the right side. I mean, one side is kind of there is shadow on it or shade. There is this side, there is a brightness. So because of the lack of symmetry, I would say, and a little bit of pixelation, maybe here you don't have any uh, detection, which is quite a bit interesting. Now, what I will do here is I'm going to change this number of uh, minimum number of uh, neighbors from five to three, see if I get more detections. There we go. You see now, so it could detect six of the faces. And uh, you see now this face is uh, detected. One eye is also detected. The same, everything is the same. This is the interesting part that this eye is detected like a face, <laughs> which is very interesting. And again, it's because of all the dissimilarities and lack of symmetry and so on on the left and on the right side. Okay. And this hand, I would say, that's a very big factor. It's not the face alone. There is a hand involved. So to me, this hand is a big factor of removing the uh, normal appearance of a face. And uh, the computer is uh, just seeing numbers here and the results of the filter. So it can easily be confused. And again, this one is completely tilted. That eye can barely be seen. And this eye here, again, I can see this lack of symmetry here, probably some extra um, detail here and the redness around this. I mean, if you look at this eye, it is very uh, asymmetric with respect to this one. But you clearly can see that uh, I can get more detections. So this hard classifier is never perfect. It's never going to get you anything uh, like a human does. But it is actually pretty impressive, as you can see, for something that only sees numbers, these many detections and these many eye locations is not really bad. Okay, but we should never expect perfection out of this code. So hopefully this video was useful to you. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.